All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all doing all right in these perilous times. Now, today I want to discuss about patience, you know, being patient, waiting on God, and also having patience with others as well. You know, patience is a word that <laughs> nobody likes to preach nowadays. You know, when people have their messages or talk about things, people like to talk about manifest and manifestation and basically a bunch of overnight stuff and miracles on the fly and everything, you know. We're in a time period where nobody wants to wait for things anymore or earn things thoroughly. And also on the other patient side of it, no one has patience for other people's um, lack of knowledge or set of personality traits or whatnot, you know, all of us are very dogmatic when it comes to how we treat people or how we belittle them or how we try to understand them or talk down on them. All those type of things happen due to a lack of patience. We're not willing to actually learn about someone and take our time out to truly understand them and where they're coming from. We're just so impulsive and blatant about labeling someone so fast or just throwing someone on the bus we don't have it's like no one has patience no more for next person we have to have patience with each other you know what i mean um it doesn't mean to just tolerate disrespect or negative things but when it comes to a person who may not have the same beliefs as you or who may not understand things as fast as you do you have to have compassion and patience with that person okay because if you're a person that's a man of God or a woman of God and you have you have this relationship with God, when you're trying to win souls, when you're attempting to bring people to the kingdom of heaven, when you're bringing people to the minute into the, to the kingdom of heaven or whatnot, you have to understand that other people have went through different paths. You did people have came from different traumas, different from you. So you can't just go up to them and expect them to understand it right out the gate and just be holy right out the gate. I mean, everything is a process. So everything kind of is like pulling teeth in the process. And, you know, things take time, you know, with patience and prayer, things do take time. And when you're dealing with another person, whether it's family, friends or your partner relationship or your co-worker or a colleague, or whatever, when you're trying to win souls and bring them to the kingdom, you have to remember that. They still have different ways of seeing things the way you do. There, or, there will always be a difference of opinions. Okay, well, what 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 transpired in this person's life caused that person to kind of think like that or have that certain outlook. So you have to be compassionate, and understanding about that. You know, Jesus had patience with every person he reached out to. You know, people questioned Jesus and ask him a million questions and he was st he still had patience and was calm and was able to answer them with no problem did he have a little did he get angry about certain things or sense the sarcasm of course he did but he still had patience and compassion when he dealt with nicodemus when he dealt with the pharisees when he dealt with positive or negative people or when he came to healing people he had patience with everybody he dealt with he kept that he kept that same energy with everybody he had patience dealing with the disciples because the disciples weren't exactly on the same level as him. So Christ had to show them the way Christ had to put them on. He had to hook them up. He had to bring them back as a babe. You know, he had to start them from level one and let them grow thoroughly. See, that's how you have to have patience with people. You have to break them down, but not in a manipulative or negative way. You just have to like humble them or show them the way or show them good examples and be like, hey, this is how you do it or this is not the way to go. You have to correct them. You know, tough love, iron sharpens iron. You know what I mean? So you got to have patience with people. You know, we got to We got it. Those are things that aren't preached anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because we're, we're such in this judgmental generation. We're in this critical, criticizing generation, this belittling uh, manipulative generation nobody has patience for each other no more uh, nobody knows how to communicate properly and not just communicate nobody knows how to listen anymore you know listening is a lost art today everybody wants to prove a point so bad everybody wants to be right so bad no one wants to listen nobody wants to understand anymore and patience understanding and listening all those things go hand in hand all right patience is also the part of, of the fruits of the spirit so if you claim you have the spirit and all of that, patience is part of it. All right. 
You can't just be so fast to misjudge somebody and throw labels on them and belittle them. You have to have patience and understand where they're coming from, understand their trauma, understand their pain, understand why they do the things that they do, understand their walk of life. All right. Give it time. Friendships, relationships or whatnot. Give it time. Be patient with those things. Be patient with people. All right. If you don't like a person's energy or their spirit or whatever, yeah, it might bother you a bit or whatnot, but just still have patience with it, okay? The potential of that person, the impact you could have on them, you know, it could rub off on them and they could change and transform into who God wants them to be. That creature that Christ wants them to be, you got to give that person patience to turn into that, all right? And as far as patience on the other side of waiting on things, waiting for the Lord, waiting for prayers to be received, waiting for prayers to be answered, we have to have patience with that too. We've been praying to God for certain things in our lives or certain things to open up for us or certain open doors or, you know, just, we just pray for all types of stuff. And we have to remember to be patient about that. I did a message not too long ago about prayers answered and things like that when it came to prayer. But when it comes to patience, you know, you have to let God have his way when God is in full control. He's not working on your time. He's working on his timing. His timing is better than your timing. Because all of us, of course, are impulsive. We want results right now. We want it right away. We want microwave stuff. We want it right on the money. But good things, great things take time. There's a lot of things that have to play out before that can happen and manifest. That can be received fully and orderly. You know what I'm saying? It's an order to this. It's a structure. It's a strategy behind it. Okay? Because, yes, God works in mysterious ways. But God is very mysterious. He's very strategic. Okay? Okay? His ways is higher than our ways. His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. So when he does something on a random time, it was a lot of really reasons behind why he didn't want to give it to you at your timing. You get what I'm saying? It's about his appointed timing, his divine timing, not yours. Because if we get something too fast or too soon, it will end up spoiling it, we'll end up messing it up, we'll end up damaging it. When God's timing, when God delivers, when God comes through with it, It's beautiful because we understood how long it took to get it. We understood what we had to go through to get it. We understood how steadfast and firm we had to be waiting patiently for what he delivered to us or what what we prayed for. You You get what I'm saying? So when we're being patient and waiting on God and waiting for God to answer our prayers, we have to be just standing firm. We got to be solid. We got to be ready for it. We got to be aligned for it. We got to be positioned for it. All right, we got to be disciplined. We got to have self-control. Once we get that answered prayer or that thing that God gives us, we have to do the right things with it. Because this honestly has nothing to, you know what I mean? We can't be self-serving in this. We can't have selfish ambitions. All right? God, we have to be patient about these things, all right? Because God's timing is the best. I'm just telling y'all right now, God's timing is clutch. God is on point. When he blesses us unexpectedly, it's beautiful because a lot of times he be blessing us and giving us things we didn't even ask for or didn't even know who was going to walk into or surprise with. God is the best one when it comes to gifts and surprising. Remember when Jesus talked about that parable and that analogy, he talked about if an earthly person, an earthly father can give to their child, how much more can a heavenly father give to us? You see what I'm saying? God understands our wants and needs and our desires. He gives the desires of our hearts. We have to remember that. All right. But impatience can damage good things. All right. When you rush things, you has things, you want something so fast, it messes it up. It spoils it. You know, when you bake a cake, you can't just bake it just so fast. What's going to happen? It's going to be all dripping. It's going to be all messy and sloppy. When that cake is in that oven for a good time, it comes out beautifully. It's firm. It's delicious. It's the whole night. That's how this thing is with blessings. It's like baking a cake. It takes time. All right. When it comes to things that we pray to God for, it's baked. It's not microwaved. It's not <laughs> thrown in a little, you know, a little heater. It is micro. It is baked. All right. Our blessings are baked. It is not microwaved. It's baked. All right. When God looks out for us and we're patient and we're doing, we're on the right path for it. Man, I'm telling you, it's beautiful. It's abundant. It's amazing. It's unlimited. It just goes beyond joy. That's why. I, when we get the desire that was granted, it's like a tree of life. 
it's just an undescribable feeling. It's just beautiful. All right. And we have to be patient for that. We have to keep working hard, walking by faith. We have to keep doing right along this path. And we got to be patient. All right. Every person in the Bible was patient. Abraham was patient. Moses was patient. Well, you know, Moses got angry. You know, Moses, you know, broke the commandments and the Israelites got him angry and whatnot. But um, outside of that scenario, Moses was patient. Daniel was patient, you know, Joseph was patient, even though Joseph was arrogant and all that, he was patient, Jesus was patient, all right, Paul was patient, all the followers of God were patient in their own way, and that's how we have to be, God loves us, he protects us, he looks out for us, but we have to be patient, all right, always keep that in mind, man, there's two types of patience, there's a patience when it comes to waiting on something or wanting something at a certain timing, and then there's the other patients dealing with compassion for another person or dealing with people with different personalities and beliefs. You got to have that patience as well. So I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that y'all get baptized. and Y'all start over for the Lord. I pray that you get new beginnings. I pray that things get better for you, open up for you. I pray that you know you, you start going through different phases in your life. I pray that you stop being stagnant. I pray that you stop being lazy. I pray that you just get moving and keep moving higher and higher. I pray that your relationship with God gets better as well. All right. Remember, people, patience. All right. This is not something preached anymore, but we have to remember that we, we have to be patient. All right. I got much love for y'all. Peace.